Cari amici sportivi, welcome to yet another, uh, yes, the last episode of the season. The finale. The finale. Okay, it's a finale. Finale. Okay. It's the season finale, not series finale. Oh, okay. Season finale. Yes, here where we uh, mostly speak about the Serie A, a bit of international, sometimes from European. And yes, well, we're not professionals, nor do we pretend to be. I'd like uh, to introduce, uh, for the final time this season, Francis. Mr. Moratti is looking into getting an investor. But we all know what we really need is a guy like Zio Fester, Polo Giacomo. To my right, I have Steve. Alessandro Nesta kind of, kind of lost his head last night. But you know what, if it was me, I would have hit him with all of my might. Hello. And I am Vince. Please be in sports. Bring, bring to Canada Serie A, because I can't take watching that super varietà. Tavernese. Uh, I really hope so because uh, this try I can't do it anymore. Yeah, L'eredità, uh, super varietà, I can't do well, it. People yeah. know by now because we've been bashing La Rai the whole I, year. I hope, they, uh, I hope they watch us. All right, so guys, this is the finale. We'll talk about, we won't talk about our starting 11 of the year because tomorrow, uh, Monday, we'll be on Serie A live radio. Yeah. And we'll be talking about our Serie A uh, starting 11. So we decided for today that we'll talk about our bidone. Our starting, our starting 11 bidone. The guys that, you know, suck. The flops of the year. And tomorrow we should be on at about 8.50. If you guys want to listen in live, it is on uh, Radio Regent. It's live streaming at that time at 8.50 or on your TuneIn application, where it be Blackberry and uh, all these other phones there. All right, so let's start with our uh, starting 11 beat Tony. What do we start with? Are we start with the players or are we start with, the, four, with the, 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 the... Okay, let's start okay. with the coach. Okay. Okay. Francis, who's our, who's our bidone coach of the year? It has to be Zeman. Because yeah. Zeman came into the Roma job with all kinds of expectations. People said, yes, Roma's going to play offensive soccer and be attractive, and Roma will be a contender. But no, Zeman got fired. Yeah, Zeman got fired and he made a joke out of Roma. He, he, he had a couple of good runs where two, three victories, but in the end he was just like, you know, putting Team Greece on there and Guys, leading the Russian. Zeman, Zeman was a mirage. We all knew it. We, we called it on this show from the beginning. He was missing La Grinta. He was uh, getting in the bad, on the bad side of certain players. The were, top players. The top players. players. The, the, the core of uh, Roma. Next one. Yeah, next we, gotta, we gotta go. We gotta go. As president, this will not be a surprise. Who else? But from Palermo, Mr. Zamparini. Yeah. I don't think we even need to emphasize on Zamparini. Do we really need to explain why Zamparini is the big no. president? And now, before we announce the, uh, the, the squad, this team led by Zeman and President Zamparini, where are they playing? At the IS Arena. The, supposedly, it's supposed to be in Cagliari. We still don't know where this place is. We don't this, know where it is. Uh, this is the stadium that uh, when people around Cagliari, they uh, woke up one day, they said, hey, Mustadio de Calcio. You know what, poor guy. I feel bad. The stadium would never any fans, but so, so far, that's our team, our president. Guys, oh, the oh, technical director. The technical the director. transfer guru. Who else but Mr. Branca? that did some clever, clever deals this year. Not only did he get rid of Schneider, Coutinho for change. He sent Livaja away. And who did he bring in this year? Pereira at 12 million. Silvestre at 8 million. Gargano that a Napoli left over and nobody wanted. Take it easy, Francis. Oh. We know you've been frustrated all year. It's okay. This, seriously, I think you, I think you would have taken an average fan and wouldn't have done worse. I would have confined my whatever amount he spent this year on transfers in case he did not do one good transfer. Guys, can we, say, can we yeah. say, can we say on this show that with the population of FIFA 13 players who play their fantasy football on FIFA 13, can we say, say being safe that 70% of those people made better transactions on the video game than Brank. Yeah, most probably. All Perfect. right, so Next. there's our team. Let's go. We're Let's starting start with our players. keepers. Yes. Yes. Give me the honor to our keeper. Our keeper, our keeper is Amelia. Yes. Wow. People are going to say, yeah, but Steve, he never played. Yeah, but when he played, he made enough damage oh my to God. cost Milan some points. Not only to cost Milan some points, to destroy them, the Juve game, he gave them three points. He gave, he said, I'm Marco Amelia, take the three points, because I'm going to tackle Asamoah in the six-yard box on the completely okay. other side, okay. not dangerous. Okay. Okay. Next. Amelia and? Well, I was more going with the Roma, 
starting goalie, whoever that is. Slackheimer, uh, Gorkoche, Lobo, they're all horrible. Horrible, horrible. There's our goaltenders. Now we go with our back four. Back four, and I have to start at the left back with Pereira. And I still don't know why we spent 12 million dollars on this guy. This guy has no soccer sense and he cannot put a cross in the box. No. He always puts it in the wrong spot on top of the box in the back where there's nobody and we get countered. We gotta go through the whole team. But you know what's the problem? There's actually people interested in buying this guy now. You should sell. Oh, yeah. give him for free. Monaco is interested. We have, we have a center back. Senor Aronica that went from Napoli to Palermo. I don't know if you guys remember. I don't know if it was just about all year and that back pass that he gave directly. I don't remember who they were playing, but they lost those three points. And that guy's a, he's a lumberjack. He is a, he's a true lumberjack. He's the one that slapped out Zlatan last year. Other center back we have? We have Acer Acerbi. Oh my God, Acerbi. From the Kievo to Milan, okay, maybe he's going to do good. He just sucked. And this is happened? a proven fact that Acerbi is not a big game player, cannot play three times a week. He's a Kievo, he plays good at Kievo. Yeah, yeah, right. Milan, his defense, he was going through a phase at Milan where they started bad and he was mixed Acerbi up. Acerbi is there. How about you talk about his partner? Uh, yes, Mr. Silvestre from Palermo. <laughs> for $8 million, $8 million for Silvestri. Inter, Inter are forced to sign him because they want to send him back to Palermo. Palermo goes, no, you have to buy him. You have yeah. to buy him. There we go. So those are uh, Bidoni defensemen. Who do we got in midfield? Let's start in midfield. Who else but Zeman's favorite midfielder of all time, Mr. Taxidis, that the Roma Ultras booed. Okay. I think he's an honest player. I think, runs. you know what it is? I think because he was played too much, there was too much expected of him. No, no, no. He's no, a regular no, no, player. Say, because he was playing in the place of De Rossi. Yes. Ah, okay, yes. yes That's yes. why he was, uh, the, the added pressure was given to Taxidis, who obviously is someone not technically sound to play in Serie A. Zeman mistake, the only coach. Technically Zeman. sound. Did you see that? is again in the picture for destroying probably this per yeah. poor person's picture. And somebody that really started their career really well at Milan, but it was a total flop this year, Nocerino, how did Nocerino slump this far down? Nocerino never had a chance to play this year, forget that, but he did have 13 goals last year in Champions League, but that's when you realize a guy like Ibra, that takes all the attention to him, how it opened up a guy like Boatang, a guy like Nocerino, the guy's got like lint, he's out the heart, but this year, Noche, I love you, buddy, but no, this year I've had to skip. Also in midfield, Mr. Gargano. The guy's just reckless. I have no other word for this guy but reckless. This guy does not belong in Serie A. And now, with your luck, Mazzadi's your coach, he's gonna keep yeah, Gargano. He wants to keep him, probably. Yeah. Anyways, and who else in midfield? Mr. Ricky Alvarez. Ricky. The left foot wonder. The guy plays with one foot, and even that foot is not great. You know what it is with Alvarez? It's because he, he played with your emotions like a yo-yo. Those couple of games, you had a couple of great goals, you're all excited, no, and then the no, next no, game... No, 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 it's not playing as though his agent was a super agent that sold him as the next coming of Christ. And nobody ever saw this guy play, actually, when they signed him. That's the problem. problem. And that's why he ends up in Serie A, and he cannot do nothing with one foot. We saw but, another guy uh, last week with one foot, and unfortunately is a little bit better. Yeah, just a little so bit. So let's go with uh, up front. Eel, well, eel. Wait, wait, wait. That's the last one. Okay, you're going to Let's start with Tommaso Rocchi. Yeah. Nothing against Rocchi, but he was, he was he He was put in a position, he was put in a position where he was demanded to be a Melito. And unfortunately, I always respected Rocky. He, score, he did score his 101st goal in Serie A this year. At least that's something to look forward to. But my thing, who cares that he scored 100? But he was brought in to replace Melito and Branca once again. That's why you have Branca as your director, and you have the Rocky. What, and what kind finally, of finally, go, go, go. finally, finally, what kind of striker does the Serie A championship? The well, Bidone would not be complete without a Juve flop signing. The, the uh, ultimate flop. The ultimate flop. Il top. Player, top player, Io so bevo e guido la macchina, <laughs> Nicholas Bentner. Guys, uh -huh. how, how weak was the Serie A where Juve were able to sign someone like Nicholas Bentner after being involved uh, in every single... Robin, Van Persie, Iguain, e chi arriva? Nicholas, Nicholas Bentner. I see all our Twitter fans, uh, the Juventus, it seems like it's a recurring a recurring theme that's going on because now it seems like they're they're pretty much involved in everybody else and I wonder who they're gonna bring in which now we'll again. talk about in our next segment the transfer section so we just wanted to have fun with our bidone of the year and 
the st our bidon is starting 11 has been brought to you by Birra Moretti. Why? Because it's Italian. Let's go. <laughs> go on. Let's go with the, the rumors in Syria. The big news this week, this Indonesian businessman, uh, Mr. Tohir, made an offer to Moratti to buy Inter for $300 million. For a full team. For a full team. 300 million. Or what was it? 80% for 240 or something, something like that. He gave Moratti an ultimatum. He goes, listen, you have to make a decision. How do you guys view, uh, from an outsider, you know, as not an Inter fan, how do you view this possible purchase of Inter? For, for me, guys, you know what it is? You, you, you got to try to look at it. Yes, we're all looking at it as fans, but you got to look at it as, as a business. The integrity of Serie A, we never had, uh, you know, outside money coming, whether it be from, you know, the uh, Saudi Arabia or Indonesia, this gentleman. Is that what Syria Russia. needs to compete right now? But that's what the whole thing is that are we going, are we going to, some of us are going to look at this with pride, but on the other side, business wise, uh, Steve, business wise, it's, yeah, it it's might business be. Business wise, unfortunately, Serie yeah, we've said it uh, all, year, uh, all year long, they lack in the marketing, they lack in, uh, I think this foreign investment could be good for Inter, but all of Serie yeah, needs to look at some kind of influx of cash to get them back to where they were. Guys, come on. Say but yeah. I would say but, one thing. Yeah. I would never sell, whether it be Silvio one day or Mr. Murat, Murati, I would never sell over 50% of shares. I think you still have to have that integrity in Serie A to keep no, the control. These guys have money. Something that Silvio and Murati obviously do not have. That's what my book brings and back. 300 million. Million. 300 million for a team like Inter, like we were speaking before. Let's put it out there. It's 300 million because of the debt that Inter has. Yeah, because we were trying to win. Like, Under Moratti, the players that Inter were getting, were getting Brockies, Scalottos. Now, this guy's coming in, he's promising 100 million dollars. He's talking about names like Lavezzi, Modric. Hopefully, this guy's really serious and uh, it won't be a Malaga situation where the owners pull out and it was all a bunch of. Crap. Exactly. So. We'll see how we'll have to... All right, guys. Uh, elsewhere, we'll talk about your team, Milan. They've been really quiet uh, on the transfer. No rumors really coming out no, of Milan. or big names. It's all little names here. Silvio was in Sardinia doing a bunga bunga party. Then, no, I can't meet Allegri. How many times did we schedule this meeting? I don't know. I have not a, I have not a clue of what's going on. No, that's no. Pretty, pretty much why Milan's not involved in any rumors. Because what you see out there are just the hypothetical thoughts of who, which players they would like to bring in or not. Nothing concrete. The only thing that I saw that was a little bit, uh, a little bit concrete was the Chechi uh, swapping uh, see, Salomon for... For what? Depends. If you don't Yankee. know who your coach is going to be, how could you have transfer rumors of possible players that you want exactly. to bring in? If it's Allegri, you might want some players. If it's uh, Seedorf, Reichard, right anybody else, they might want another type of player. That's why all these rumors will and you admit, the coach. Will you admit one thing on camera after this long season that we've had? Would you be happy if Allegri stayed? No, because I'm still getting ag ag agitated at this Milan, even after the long season we have, because I'm having a long off season. Because I don't even know if he's going to coach. Guys, to be honest, all the big names are out. I think. I Pretty think. much the only guy that the only guy I would see that Milan would be excited is Montella. But besides that, Allegri's going to stay, but it will be with very, very, very firm. Uh, what do you call them? Guidelines. Guidelines and say like, you know what, if you screw up within the first couple of months. Let's say if you would have a beginning of season like we had this year, you wouldn't, you wouldn't stay. There's a rumor that uh, Allegri's contract is going to be based on the, the fact that when he plays the round robin to get into the Champions League, if he makes it, he continues. If he doesn't make it, he goes on. Well, it makes sense. But uh, also, De Laurentiis and Napoli, finally, he's making Napoli a serious team because he said this week, I'm not taking any bids from other teams for Cavani besides 63 million dollars minimum. He goes, I don't want 30 million in a player. Who do you guys make it that? Finally, somebody's putting their foot down. And you think he's gonna hold up to that? I think he's gonna hold up because I think he's the type of character where you're not gonna push him. He has the asset. The asset is Cavani. Everybody yeah. wants Cavani. Maybe they're not talked about as much as now Suarez in the news or uh, Radim Falcao who was in the news, but everybody wants Cavani and he knows that. And 63 million, yes, because he takes that money and he does what he wants. He's not going to get someone sloppy seconds. No, Zeko but you, or, you know what, Steve, let, let's be it this way. If De Laurentiis is balancing the books with a guy like Cavani on him, what, why would he sell him? I don't think Cavani's come out and said, I'm very happy in Napoli, he doesn't want to leave, he doesn't want, but you're playing Champions League. I think, guys, There's unless a very, very incredible deal comes up, Cavani's going to stay in there. There are 63 million reasons why he would sell Cavani. Yeah, very well said. Good. Uh, also, Juve, against this week, is linked up with every single player in the world. You really happy with Juve. 
It's not that, just that you, you, you read Tutto Sport, which I shouldn't read anymore, I don't even know why I bother going, and it seems that every top player, serious name, Tevez, Higuain, Jovetic, Ogbona, Diamanti, everybody's going to Juventus, and everybody's been quoted saying, yes, I do want to play for Juventus somehow. But Higuain said he was, yes, La Juve Mecerica, but there are other offers. And let's be honest here, guys, unless Serie A shapes up, to be a, a better, a, get back to the respect that we once once had about 15, 20 years ago. Iguain, if he has a, if he has a, a, an offer from one of the big English teams, would he not prefer to go to one of the English teams? The only reason why he prefer to go to an English team than to Juve is just because the Italian teams, unfortunately, cannot meet the salary demands of these players. Because we are abiding by the no, law. No, but Juve, Juve is going to have to like take a chance and start spending money. If they want to go to this next level, you know, they're talking about bringing all these players. So who's out? Who's leave? Somebody has to leave now. They have to get rid of a few players. Who's out? Who's out? They're talking about Vucinic. Vucinic I see as a... Not because he was no good, Francis, because he's an asset and he, he's, he, he, he's, he, worth he's worth something. Jovinko, Quagliarella, I don't think so. Quagliarella, I think he's out. Uh, Quagliarella and Mati, they're, they're involved in every single transaction that Juve is making. But if you bring in in Loriente, if Iguain comes, which I do hope for Juventus and not only for Juventus, for Serie A, you gotta get rid of some guys. Alright, yeah. Giorgio, Iguain, come in, you have Lorente, somebody has to go. There's a few players actually that have to go. But okay, guys, let's get down to business and let's see that, unfortunately, none of these players are gonna end up at Juve. Hopefully we'll not. See. You know what, I wanna see some big names coming to Juve just to make it interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, Roma show, they divulged a new logo this year, uh, this week. Hell, I'm done. Not very attractive, not much change, but I no, think no, the uh, they had a chance to, you know, rebrand the, the team, they flopped. The best is what they said, that they've consulted with ultras, with Roma fans about the logo before coming out, and it's like, who the hell did you ask? No. Because everybody hates it. Hey guys, I'm sorry. It's if the ultras would have designed the logo, they would have put Totti's face in the cross. Yeah. And that's it. But Roma, it seems like nothing's happening. There's no players being linked there. Does anybody want to go play at Roma? That we don't know who the coach is going to be. I think they're depending, they're waiting on the Milan uh, situation. But is Alleg even if Allegri goes to Roma, guys, who is he going to attract? As because we discussed this in past weeks. What Roma needs is a leader as a coach. A, a, a typical Mourinho. Not, I'm not saying Mourinho, but a guy that could take away the, 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 uh, the, uh, the attention from the team to him. Now, let me ask you guys this. Out of all possible candidates right now, who would be best fit to go for trauma? Because Totti, guys, another year, another two years, that's it. Honestly, the Rossi, you gotta keep him there because even him, you give him a. Uh, I have a thing. feeling the Rossi's on the way out. But, uh, where are, what's that guy he left there? Baldini, um, Sabatini left? One of the guys. Oh, right, they're the talking about him yeah. being linked somewhere else. Talk to them and stuff. But, guys, who would it be? Who would you put as a coach? Right? I would keep yeah. Andrea Zoli. Yeah. You know what I would put? Put Guidolino over there. Guidolin, what else do you have to prove? Well, Guidolin go throwing Guido stuff in that mess. mess there, Vince. He doesn't want to go to Roma, it's a mess. Andrea Zoli, unfortunately, if the whole Osvaldo situation did not occur, I would say yes, leave him there. But now with the Osvaldo situation, unfortunately, uh, it's both might be gone, or one of the two has to be gone, and I think Roma, uh, their best bet is to try to find someone. There's rumors of Laurent Blanc wanting to get back into coaching. That would be good, that would uh, be good. There's some uh, coaches from La Liga who are interested in taking on a new challenge of Roma, but unfortunately, like we always say, if Roma doesn't find an identity to continue with Totti and De, De Rossi and for the future, they will always be in the situation. Well, finally, uh, congratulations to Bayern that officialized their uh, tripletta this week. And you know what? It's three times in the past four or five years that it's been done. I heard, Is it worth anything? I heard, I heard the rumor that uh, Pep, he bet heavily against the win because, you know, he wanted to go in as a project at yeah. Bayern Munich. Well, now if he wants this project, he's have to get rid of some players and bring in other players. Yeah. And to win another treble because that's the only thing that the fans are going to expect. So he's got himself into so, some hot water. So in this kind of case, guys, right, the prestige of the treble, it's still, we were talking about it before the show, possibly considered as a, a perfect game in baseball. In a, over 150 years of baseball, there's been probably, what, I think 10 or 11 of them. But the treble, we've had a many. No, no, actually, yeah. Maybe in this last, we're not baseball experts. No, guys, no, no. Honestly, nor do we pretend to be. Nor do we. <laughs> but in the, in the, um, what they, what they've accomplished this year is fantastic. But a guy like Pep Guardiola, who's going? 
Who's leaving that team? Because those guys are not staying there. I think Robin's out. Robin, I believe he's out because he won't fit into that system. Why? Because he doesn't pass. Second of all, uh, what's his name? Mario Gomez. I really feel bad for a guy because he's he's a for me he's a stellar striker. You feel bad for a guy? Then when the trouble, he, he probably made no. I feel bad because he doesn't deserve he doesn't deserve that Mandzukic is, is playing ahead of him when they scored the amount the same rate of goals. So Ribery maybe. Because guys, no, you have Tony you, Cruz. You Tony, just signed an, ex, an extension. Tony Cruz. You have Gotze that's coming in. Maybe Lewandowski to retire, maybe to the Bayern Munich. There's going to be a lot of movements at Bayern because he cannot keep that team and there's a lot of need. He has to keep that team motivated. And now, how do you keep these guys motivated? But I still after? think you asked about the whole prestige of the treble. I still think, unless, unless we start getting trebles every single year, I still think it's prestigious because we've had, there hasn't been many, but because they've been in the last five years, there's been three of them. Maybe that's why we're trying to discuss this whole thing. There was the Manchester United one, and then we, we, we waited an X amount of years to get another one, and then we start to get them on the road. Yeah. Unfortunately, the treble is something that they have to look at. It's, it's an accomplishment, yes, but it shows that maybe the Euro League is not as competitive as, as you think it is. True, very true. All right, guys, we have three minutes left because we're doing a shorter show this week. Our red card of the week, I'll start with mine. I'll give it to Mazzari. Not because I dislike Mazzari and everything, but you left Napoli to go to Inter, which is fine because you don't want to be there. But now you're bringing, a, you're trying to bring in a bunch of ex-Napoli players over to Inter, Zuniga, Berani, Maggio. But what did you leave? You would have been playing Champions League soccer. You had all the guys that you wanted. Now you're trying to bring them over on your team. I, what do you, I, I don't understand. That yeah, that's a, that's a, just that Napoli. Just that Napoli. Just that Napoli. Uh, my uh, red card goes to. Uh, you know what, the, the whole journalism world in Italy. Yeah, because, yeah, 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 I've had enough. First this week, a couple of guys are bad-mouthing Balotelli at Coverciano while they're back, and they're making a whole, oh, it's a racist chat. They didn't even know what the, the chants were, even though forget the fact that it's bad to, to, to boo your, your, your own, your own uh, uh, countrymen, but they're trying to make something out of nothing. And then what happens? Some Napoletan ex mafioso Oh, yo, yo, the best steaks in town the, the, at Parkway. I'm Vince, I'm just red card I don't care, I'm just saying, steaks. you guys have good steaks at Parkway. Thank you very much. But you don't like the one I cook it, you have to No, that's, that's, yeah, exactly, that's has to be Frank or Peter. And so guys, find out the schedule on the internet at Parkway when Frank and Peter are cooking, and please show up. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm good for the drinking. Guys, honestly, and then with the whole Napolitano, that, that mafia guy saying that Balotelli used to sell drugs and stuff. But why? Why are you trying to create something when there's nothing existing? And thank anything. you to Prandelli that said, Mario ha risposto, and let, leave it at that. That's it, that's all. My red card. Finally, my red card goes to Milan again. Hold on, the this whole... is live, this is live. Peter, we need you here. The whole situation, the whole situation with the culture. Last week was our unofficial, unofficial, He's unofficial He's gonna last show. He's gonna lose. And we were talking about Milan and this whole coaching merry-go-round. Now, again, he can't, uh, Silvio can't make it, then Galliani can't make it, then Allegri can't make it, and we still don't have a coach, and we still can't be involved in the transfer market, but Parkway gave me my own personal steak, which I will be able to cook at home. This is AAA Angus steak, fresh from the cows. Steve, just Parkway, just our sponsor of the year, the whole year, get to Parkway. Shows. We've been here drinking Thank you to coffee. Parkway. Ciao, guys. We love you.